Hi, I'm Gilles Bonnet from the Ruhr University Borum. Before I start this presentation, I want to thank very warmly all the organizers and all the speakers of the different events for making this trimester program a very interesting and wonderful experience. In the next 15 minutes, I will present you a collection of works with Chasapis, Grote, Kabulushko, O'Reilly, Temespari and Turki, where we investigate different aspects of high-dimensional random polytops. The general model is the following. You consider a sequence of IID real random vectors and you take the convex hull of n of them. Then we want to investigate the question, what does a high-dimensional random polytops look like? This construction is illustrated in dimension 2, in the case of the uniform distribution on the sphere for the left column and the case of the uniform distribution on the ball for the right column. This general model has a large number of degrees of freedom. The first being we need to choose a sequence of distributions which lives in any dimension. That can be, for example, uniform distribution on the sphere or on the ball, Gaussian distribution, beta distribution, etc. Since we are interested in what happens as d goes to infinity, we also need to specify how fast cross n with respect to d. For example, we can say we are in the linear regime if n is a constant time d, or we could consider other regimes such as polynomial, exponential, super exponential regimes. Finally, you need to specify a characteristic that you want to investigate. For example, you can look at the number of facets or the height of the facets. It's a notion that I will explain later in this presentation. The volume of the polytops, which you might compare with other high dimensional objects. For example, if your polytop is contained in a ball, you want you can compare the volume of the polytop with the volume of the ball. Or you can also ask what is the probability that the origin is contained in the ball, etc. As a first concrete example, we consider the setting where the distribution is any symmetric distribution which is zero on linear upper planes. This is satisfied if you take a symmetric distribution which has a density with respect to the Lebesgue measure. Then the number of points grows linearly with respect to the dimension and the characteristic we investigate is whether or not the origin is contained in the convex cell. This setting is completely understood thanks to a result of Wendel in 1962, which says that the probability that the origin is not contained in the convex cell is precisely the probability the, that a binomial random variable with parameter n minus 1 and 1 half is strictly smaller than d. This is a remarkable result because it is like a combinatorial flavor, and also it's very surprising that it requires only this little assumption on the distribution. Now we will see two easy corollaries of this result as d goes to infinity. The first is an application of the weak law of large number. It says that the probability that the origin is contained in the random polytop p and d goes to zero if n is smaller than 2 minus epsilon times d and 1 if n is greater than 2 plus epsilon times d. So this is a threshold phenomena because we are in the situation where if n is of the form constant time d, then there is a drastic change of behavior depending if this constant is below or above a certain value. Once one has shown a threshold phenomena, the next step is to look at what happens at the threshold. And the answer is given by the CLT here. So if we take n of the form 2d plus x times root square of d, then the limit of the probability that the origin is contained in the uh, convex cell is precisely phi of x, where phi of x is the cumulative distribution function of a standard normal random variable. Now we are interested in the facets of the polytop. These are the faces of codimension 1. Let f be such a facet, and h be its supporting upper plane. We parameterize this supporting upper plane by uh, its normal vector u and its signed distance from the origin h. And here the sign is plus or minus 1, depending on whether the polytop and the origin 
are on the same side of the upper planes or if they are on different sides. We call this signed distance the height of the facet F. Now we define the typical height, H tip, as a random variable uh, constructed in the following way. You take x1 till xd, iid points, so this form a d minus 1 dimensional simplex, and you condition on this simplex to be a facet of your polytop, and now you look at the height of that facet, and this is your typical height. Now let's be a bit more explicit. Consider the setting where the points are uniformly distributed on the sphere, and therefore the convex cell is a subset of the ball, and the height of the facets are always between minus 1 and 1. So consider a subinterval, h1, h2, of the interval minus 1, 1. And let's uh, try to compute the probability that the typical height is in this interval h1, h2. So you just write the, the, this conditional probability as a ratio of probabilities. Now you take your toolbox of integral geometric formulas and you work not too hard and you get you can write this as the following integral okay so you get a closed form so to say but this closed form is still quite complicated uh, because you have in integral within uh, where the integrand contains himself an integral which is exponentiated to the n minus d so if you want to have a shorter form that can be quite difficult to evaluate. But with Eliza O'Reilly, we did not give up and we worked hard and uh, obtained asymptotic results. And here it is quite important to uh, remember that we need to specify in which regime you, uh, we are. So how fast cross n compared to d. So d goes to infinity and n is a function of d. And there is three big families of regimes. The sub-exponential, exponential, and super-exponential. So sub-exponential, this is when the ratio ln n divided by d goes to zero. And in that case, we show that the typical height converges in probability to zero. If you are in the exponential regime, then the typical height will converge to a constant strictly between zero and one and this constant depend on your exponential rate and in the super exponential regime then your height goes to 1. But we did not stop there and actually we were able to show more precise results when we consider more specific regimes. In particular in certain regimes we could show central limit theorem. Well, I won't read out each of these different results. You can see, you can pause and look at them if you want, or you can have a look in our paper if you are very interested. As a complement to the typical height, you might be interested to look at what is the minimal and the maximal height. What can you say about them? So they will give you a more global information of the, of the polytop. And we showed that actually they behave similarly at the typical height. So at least for the these three big families, sub-exponential, exponential, and super-exponential, we have the same behavior. Again, when we consider more specific sub-regimes, we obtain more precise results. Here is an intuitive representation of the previous theorems that I have presented. This is a two-dimensional representation of a high-dimensional phenomena. The red curved segments represent the facets of the high-dimensional polytops. Their extremities are on the sphere because they represent the vertices of the random polytops which are distributed on the sphere. The height of the facets correspond to the distance between the origin and the red curve segment. That's why we need to curve the segments in the two-dimensional representation. Now we will investigate the distance between the random polytop P and D and the unit ball BD. For this we stick in the setting where the distribution is the uniform distribution on the sphere. 
We have different way of measuring the distance between the polytop and the pole. The first one is to consider the host of distance, and in this setting, this is precisely 1 minus the minimal height. And another way of uh, measuring the distance is quite different, is to look at the volume ratio. So we look at the expected volume of the random polytop divided by the volume of the ball, which is by construction a number between 0 and 1. A direct corollary of the theorem on the minimal height says that the host of distance will go to 0 if and only if ln divided by d goes to infinity. That means if and only if we are in the super exponential regime. For the volume ratio, one has to be careful, because you can be close in house of distance but still have a small volume ratio. This comes from a well-known fact of high-dimensional geometry, which is the thin shell phenomenon, and it says that the volume of the ball, BD, is concentrated in a thin shell of width of order 1 over D. That means that if you remove this thin shell, then what remains as a volume which is significantly smaller. In particular, if the host of distance goes to zero but slower than 1 over d, then you might lose too much volume. How fast does n need to grow such that the volume ratio goes to 1? has been answered by Pivo Varov in 2007, and he actually shows a threshold result with a threshold at n equal d to the uh, d over 2, and so if you if n grows slightly slower then the volume ratio will go to zero and if n grows slightly faster then the volume ratio will go to one. In a 2018 paper written with Chasapis Gorotte Temesrari and Turki, we were able to extend this threshold phenomena to a larger class of distribution, which are the beta distributions. This includes the uniform distribution on the ball, when you take beta equal 0, and the uniform distribution on the sphere, when beta is equal to minus 1. And so you see that we have a similar threshold, and we have this parameter beta, which appear inside the threshold. Okay? And we are also able to prove similar results for intrinsic volume, so you just replace the volume in this volume ratio by any intrinsic volume of your choice, and also for the Gaussian distribution. The next step is, as presented at the beginning of this talk, to show a phase transition. And this is what we did together with Sakar Kavlushko and Nikola Turki, where we showed the following phase transition, still in the model where the distribution is any of the beta distributions. And uh, in this paper, we were also able to extend this to the setting where we consider intrinsic volumes instead of volumes, and also get uh, the asymptotic for the number of vertices in the case where the distribution is the uniform one in the ball. In order to keep this presentation relatively short, I won't give more details, but you can, of course, uh, refer to our papers. and. Uh, also, I would like to invite you or encourage you very strongly to watch the video of Nicola Turki, which presents our joint works, and to follow the talk of Eliza O'Reilly on February 25th, and she will also talk about our work. So, thank you very much for listening, and have a good day.